Hello, I'm Andrew Sharman. In this talk, I'd like to talk about behavioural influence, why we give money to strangers, and why we like to keep our bathrooms tidy. Think back to the last time you stayed overnight in a hotel. Did you notice that little sign or card in the bathroom encouraging you to reuse your towels? Yeah, me too. In fact, I've seen a lot of these little cards recently and have amassed quite a collection of them now. They all seem to have different messages on. Which one do you think is the most persuasive in motivating people to reuse their towels? Is it to help save the planet? Is it to help the hotel save money? Is it because others reuse their towels? Or is it to help the environment, perhaps to, to plant trees? Which one do you think encourages most people to reuse their towels? Make your selection now and we'll return to this little quiz a little bit later. But now let's talk about behavioural change. When I was a kid, I remember playing a game called Two Lies and One Truth. Do you know it? Let's try playing it now. Three statements are appearing on your screen. Which one of them do you think is true? That education changes behaviour. That we must change attitudes first before we can change behaviour. Or that people behave like everyone else does. Which one do you think is true? Let's take them one at a time. First, education changes behaviour. Well, at face value, this one looks okay, doesn't it? In fact, it's the classical approach to health and safety that many of us have adopted over the years. A new employee arrives in the organisation and they attend an induction training. They're dropped into a job and they attend further training. There are policies and procedures written to tell them what to do and how to behave. Signs on the wall and notices on the machines reinforce key points. And regular toolbox talks put everything together. But then accidents still happen, don't they? Why is that? Well, I think it's because education only takes us so far. We need to go beyond that. OK, let's look at the second one now. We need to change attitudes first before we can change people's behaviours. Setting behavioural expectations is crucial in safety or any other aspect of business. And no one knows this better than street performers. Have you ever been walking along a road in the morning and noticed a busker? When you look down and you see he already has a large amount of cash in his hat. You see the busker has placed those coins there himself to set the behavioural expectation that he wants you to donate money as you pass him. If he's smart, he'll have already put a few coins of higher value in the hat in places that you can see clearly. The busker sets behavioural expectations and often these nuanced clues are enough for us to pick up on and give him the behaviour that he's asking for. Let's look at the third one now. People behave like other people. Did you spot it? This was the truth. Whether in an organisation, in a sports team, at a party, or walking around a new city, we all like to fit in. We look at the behaviours of those around us and try to emulate those. Let's go back to the street performer to give you an example. Let's imagine the busker has a large crowd of people around him enjoying his show, but they don't appear to be giving money. The smart street performer will have planted one of his friends in the crowd, so that at quiet times they step forward and put some money into the hat. The biggest predictor, you see, of giving money to street performers is seeing other people do it. Once you've watched someone donate their cash, you step up and do the same. Let's return now to that little experiment from the beginning of this talk. Do you reuse your towels in the hotels? Which one of those statements do you think is most persuasive to encourage hotel guests to recycle towels when they stay overnight? Robert Cialdini, a psychologist from the University of California, found the answer out. In his research study, he noticed that while some people were motivated to save the planet or to stop pollution, the biggest motivator to encourage people to reuse their towels when they stay overnight in hotels was a message that says most guests who stay at this hotel reuse their towels. But what's more, what's really fascinating is that when the message was personalised, to tell people that most guests that stayed in this room reused their towels, the number of guests reusing went up even more.
So in summary, when it comes to influencing behavioral change in the workplace, we need to go beyond just education and training, beyond just telling people what to do. The challenge for us is that when we're creating safety, we need to find ways to set the behavioral expectations of our workforce, our colleagues and stakeholders around us. How will you encourage people to drop money in your hat or recycle their towels? Thanks for watching. See you next time.